From the very beginning, Luke Jeffers has decided to create a Friday show that is basically a spin-off series of Fridays with PewDiePie, but with a live stream twist. And since then, he focused heavily on tech topics, game segments, throwback segments, and more. However, there are some ups and downs towards this show for the past nearly 10 years now, and then a lot of laughters along the way. For nearly 10 years, FWL has been making you guys entertain, talking about somewhat about politics, and of course playing games. And now, for the 10th season of The Row, it's time for FWLX. Today, Luke Jeffers and Betty Moody will be going over the tech topics, playing video games as usual, of course, a return of LJPC BM throwback content, somewhat I watch segments, and many more fun. And now, here's the host of FWLX, Luke Jeffers and Betty Moody. Thank you, David Thousand. Let's begin, Dean. Hello, people. For Sue Jerry speaking, we'll have your X up to number four and five. Unfortunately, I have to do like topics today instead of the normal game segments. And of course, um, Elgin Fallback and of course the World of Watch segments. I was going to do those this week, but we'll have to wait till next week. For an anniversary week. Because I got very, very tired and very exhausted and just want to get some sleep and I just want to be a good idea to do topics, dev topics and then read some topics for the day. Get this all with because I, 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 right on the, right on the, in the last second I have to read some, um, Topics for the day instead of just do game segments for the day and that one were easier for me to do some That my Friday show today that one were easier to do this so and That way I won't get so bored and get some sleep And that way I won't get worried about oh it's today's party on Saturday that one more easier so better going that But anyway, let's do this now and get this over with so we got shall we? So we got for us. Anyway, the, the, the first step topic I have in mind is called, his name is Bob Edwards. Born Robert Allen Edwards. Um, he was an American broadcast journalist who was a Peabody Award when member of the Ma National Radio Hall of Fame. He owns both the National Public Radio's flagship news programs, the Avenue All Things Concerned, and more in addition. We was first the longest serving host in Larry Program's history. Starting in 2004, Edwards hosted the Bob Edwards Show on Stereo XM Radio and Bob Edwards Weekend, distributed by Public Radio International, to more than 450 million public radio stations. Okay? Those programs ended in September 2015. He was born in Louisville to, to, to Kentucky, something like that. On May 16th, 1947, to a homemade mother and accountant father. He became an instrument in radio and published a radio career for the young age. Edwards graduated from ex St. Xavier High School in 1965, St. Louisville in 1969. Anyway, he also earned an MA in commissions for American University in Washington, D.C. and graduated in 1972. Wow. Which is pretty exciting. Edwards began his radio career in 1968 with a small radio station in New Albany, Indiana. A town located across the Ohio River from Louisville, his hometown. Afterwards, Edwards served in the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War, producing and anchoring uh, television and radio news programs from the uh, American Force Korea Network for soil, something like that. Following his Army service, he wanted to anchor n news from WTOP slash 1500, a CBS athlete in Washington, D.C. 
1972 and age 25, it was anchored national newscast and multiple broadcasting system. It was joined NPR in 1974 as a newscaster for hosting Morning Edition. It was with co host of All Things Concern, something like that. Host of Morning Edition. Okay. It was host NPR's flagship program, Morning Edition, for the show's eight digestion um, uh, November 1979 until uh, April 24, 2004. After 24 plus years of, with Edwards as host, the production ratings show that with 13 million listeners, which I'm not a listener, I'm more of a watcher, by the way, second highest rated um, radio podcast in the country, behind only Rush Ramana's AM show. Um, prior to his departure, he was a very popular among both listeners and critics. Okay, watcher only. But anyway, but more more in addition, has and his host won a George um, Foster Peabody Award um, in 1999. Um, the Peabody could be um Edwards as a man who advised the eminence of excellence of radio, something like that. He was sure. That Authorized voice is often the main first Amer- main Americans hear each day. It's a rare ra- radio voice, but met but met never smokes my like that. Eminent but never intuitive, opinionated uh, but never dismissive my like that. Mister Edwards does not merely talk; he listens. His skills uh, as an interviewer was widely uh, praised. NPR's production Jeffrey Dubois said, "If I were his producer, I want to thank his of Edwards as NPR's version of Charlie Rose." Wow. Okay. The New York Daily News, my like dad, um, um, call him and the television about more than addition listeners with his interviewing skills and his calm, a production style, so my dad. Anyway, his version of Edwards conducted over twenty. Thousand interviews with NPR. Wow. The subject ranged from major politicians to authors and celebrities. His weekly call in chats uh, were retired sports guy Ray Barber uh, are following the number. The chats were supposedly about sports, but often disagreed with topics like the Gulf War. But what kind of flower were booming at Barber's tolerance for at home? Or other known sport subjects. Barbara would call Edwards Colonel Bob, referring to Edwards Kentucky Consul, uh, honored to his day of state. Wow. The departure of NPR in the April 2004, excuse my fault, anyway, NPR's executive decided to freshen up more edition style. Okay. Edwards was removed as host, replaced with St- Steve on on escape, something like that. And Renee Montage resigned as senior correspondent with NPR News. The move was taken by surprise. I would rather say, he said, uh, but it was not my decision to, to make. At first, NPR executives and spokespersons did not really fully explain the move, leaving many listeners confused. Eventually, they did not make some attempts to explain themselves. According to NPR spokeswoman, Laura Gross, um, as part of a national evaluation, a new host will be bring new ideas to variations, variations to the show. Bob's voice will still be heard. He'll still be a tremendous influence in the show. We just felt like uh, it was time to do a change. Veteran Vice President Ken Stern is also explained to move. This change in more edition is part of an ongoing variation of all NPR programming. That is taking place over the last several years. We look at the shows of all based concern and talking to the nation. With an eye that we are going to be best served listeners in the future. Now, the decision to remove Edwards made shortly before the 20th anniversary of the show was met to much more criticism by listeners. Jeffrey DeRarchins and um, NPR politicians reported that the network. Received over 50,000 less letters and emails. Most of them angry regarding Edwards' admonitions. The listener reactions was to 
the largest reaction on the single subject that NPR has received at the date. Other journalists include ABC's Cookie Roberts, who passed away in 2019, and CBS Charlie Oscar, which I talked about back in January, expressed his violations of that move. Small broadcast of this host was April 30th, 2004. Fast morning edition was interviewed with, with Charles Oscar, who passed away in 2024 of January, uh, who had also been Edward's first morning edition interview subject almost 25 years earlier. Edwards decided to not to remain in NPR as senior correspondent and fill only one story, an interview that with Bob Doyle on overseeing Senate veterans of World War II about the Washington D.C. World War II memorial in that role. Three months later, after his departure from Morning Edition, XM Satellite Radio announced he would be signed to host a new program, The Bob Edwards Show, for his XM Public Radio channel. So the next time, satellite show, okay? After leaving at NPR, um, XM Satellite Radio offered Edwards a, so, a show, so, okay? And according to Edwards, I continue to host this and hear it every day instead of initially, I will have to be on NPR. He said the format will be loose, I'll be, I'll be long interviews, short interviews, and there'll be maybe department that you gotta have the news. You got, it's not going to be all features. You got, it's not, it's not going to be the, the Federal Times either. Bob Edwards Show's first broadcast is on October 4th, 2004. Washington Post correspondents um, David Boyer and former CBS News anchor Walter Cronkite were Edwards' first guests. Uh, while continuing his daily show on XM, Edwards returned to the public radio station in January 2006. The show Bob Edwards Weekend, produced by XM Satellite Radio and streamed by Public Radio International to affiliated stations around the country. It's determined to be 2005 press release of PRAI states Bob Edwards Weekend will provide PRAI listeners to um, a party to some stable some of the suit com community commentaries like that. An interview is offered. To XM subscribers each weekday on Bob Edwards' show. This is the first time in the satellite radio company provide programming over the air terrestrial radio. Okay, the Bob Edwards' show received several awards, including the Deems Terror Award for ASCAP 2006 and a Grable Award for Cosmo Comedy Commission Arts Professional in the same year. National Press Club's um, Robert L. Cossack Award um, for Unmentional um, Report in 2007 for the documentary exploring um, Hundred H. I pronounce it, sorry, about mountain ship removal, coal mining, and that pro program will be honored with Gabriel Award in 2006 New York Festival's Go War World Medal. An award for the socially of environmental journalists. In 2008, Bob Edwards Show received an Edwards um, R. Morrow Award for the Radio Television News Directors Association at New York uh, Festival's United States Nations School Award for the Documentary. Visible Children Without Homes, The Invisible, I was also honored with the Journalism Career Center for. Children and Families by the Academy for, for um, Communication Arts Professionals. In 2009, the show received the Simon Dollar Chai Award for the Society of Professional Journalists for this documentary. Story of for Command, Surviving a Jungle ER. The documentary also received the J Federal J Gabriel um, Award for September 2012. It was named the Fellow of the Society of Professional Jurors. In 2015, the program was awarded Robert F. Kennedy with Jurors Award for the documentary. An official editor rape in the military. For his live last five episode aired on September 26, 2014. AARP podcast. In July 2018, Edwards joined the AARP to host a podcast. 
take on today. Which was published most Thursdays. Broken covered to topics on health, work, money, aging, and entertainment. Including interviews and panels decisions on if issues were found over Americans. His personal life. Ellis was married three times his marriage to John Murphy and Sharon Murphy and in divorce. Kelly, excuse me, and in divorce. He had two daughters, Ellis of Zoranya, with Sharon Kelly. He married NPR news anchor J Winston Johnson in 2011, who would remain until his death. Bob Ellis died last Saturday. He was 76 years old in Arlington, Virginia. His cause of death was reported to be Maverick, Blair, Cancer, and Heart Failure. His awards and legacy goes like this. In 1999, Edwards won a Peabody Award. 2003, um, Edwards was done in the Kentucky Journalism Hall of Fame. 2000, in November 2004, Edwards was done in the National Radio Hall of Fame. He studied his papers at the Library in American University of Washington, D.C. He held honorary degrees at the University of Louisville, Spain University, Bradbury University, Wilmington University, something like that, Fairfield College, Fairfield University, University of St. Saint Francis, and Arlington College, now the College of Ohio. And his publications. Edwards wrote three books. His first book was Fire with Fred, with Red, something like that. Yeah, if your ex that is, anyway. A Real Friendship, something like that. It was based on his weekly interviews with Brett, Red Breyer. It was released in 1993, a year after Robert's death. During his final months of NPR, Edward's work his second book, Edward R. Mel and his brother, this broadcast of journalism, which was published in May 2004. The book of short biography, Edward R. Mel, was published in publication to history, the most known broadcast journalist uh, prior to his release in 2004 film, Good Night and Good Luck. His memoir, Voice in the Box, was published in September 2011. My next step topic has to with Bob Moore, for American food executive, born um, um, Robert G. Moore, was American food executive and public crier. He and his wife, Charlie, founded um, Bob um, Red Mill, a brand who wrote grain foods and baking products in the 1978. An illustration of Moore's face is found in all on the company's products, alongside his salvation to, to good health. Born in Portland, Oregon in 1929, February 15th, and raised in San um, Bernal, California, something like that. He had a number of jobs throughout his life, including some of the United States and Army, a corner pair of gas stations. Working at J.C. Penney, he discovered his passion with the whole gray, gray Millie in the 1960s, mid 1960s, that is, when he started the Moore's Ford Mill in Reading, California in 1974. After playing retired land read the Bible in the languages, Charlie and Bob ended up opening open up another Ford Mill in Monterey, Oregon. Now comes Bob Red Mill. Coming to $100 million in revenue by 2010. And at this point, he was traded for the company and the employee struck um, ownership plan. He retired the company in 2018, remained a board member until his death in age 94 last Saturday. My next death topic has to do with William Post, born with Bill Post. He was an American inventor and he was credited with inventing Pop Tarts. He was born June 27, oh wow, 1927, to Henry Post and John F. Gonza in Grand Rapids, Michigan. His parents were Dutch um, immigrants. His father worked in the gas, uh, the, uh, um, excuse me, truck driver, carrying out this, using ashes for coal furs. Post had been at high school um, at Grand Rapids Christian High School at the age of 16. Post watched trucks and human. Business company and he formed Pop Tarts from the start of 19. What year is this came out? Let's see. 
1964. Wow, that's almost 60 years ago. Wow. Um, um, a cookie uh, company, um, which was later become Capra. He died um, last night. He was 96 years old. My next death topic has to do with Steve Wright. Not Steve Wright, the um, singer of um, Easy Beats. I'm talking about Steve Wright, the DJ, who brought you an English disc jockey, radio personality, and I was a TV press writer who was born Stephen um, Bridge Wright, MBE, credited to the Morning Zoo, Format British Breakfast Radio, with her most question personalities. Okay? His present, Stevie Wright, in the afternoon, um, for 12 years on BBC Radio 1, and 24 years on BBC Radio 2, two of the BBC's national radio stations, okay? He was best known to continue, uh, to present his Sunday Wild Songs on Radio 2 to his death, and in October 2023, he took over the host of Wild Ronnie Pick of the Pops. Chart show. On BBC television, however, Wright has hosted Home Troops, the Wright, Stevie Wright um, people show, Auntie's TV favorites, Top of the Pops, and TOTP2. Wright won awards, including Beat Day Beat, Beat DJ this year, and voted by the Daily Mirror every year, um, poll, and by Smash Hit in 1994. In 1998, he was awarded TRIC Personality of the Year in his radio programmies. He was born August um, 26, 1954 in Greenwich, England. Okay? Grew up in New Cross, in South London. He had brother Rollins. The father Richard managed to put Merton to store a um, trouser square. Quiet and underage child. Right always, um... I uh, had abortion at the work in the, uh, in the, um, in the entertainment industry. He was educated at the, um, uh, Eastwood High School for Boys, near, um, out South East, South Bend, on, on, on C, Essex, anyway. Where he, um, broadcast a NASA radio show over the speaker system for the South, South Club Chub Boys, my dad. He eventually joined the BBC staff in the 1970s while working on the, on the returns court, on the John Bourne Ray Library in Ashton House, opposite Broadcasting House in London, before leaving the spot start broadcast in 1976. In Thames Valley, Rail Rail 10, 210 is like that, Reed Berkshire. In 1979, Rob got his big break radio, Robinsburg, where he presented his own nightly show. He joined BBC Radio and July, January 1980, took him over the Saturday evening slot for the, before the, the Saturday mornings later that year. Stevie Wright in the year, in the afternoon. He moved to the, the um, daytime radio to Steve Wright in the afternoon in 1981. Um, later introduced the zoo format in the UK. In 1984, Steve Wright um, took over the um, uh, over the Sunday morning and show uh, entitled Steve Ryan Sunday. Which meant to be presented the weekday afternoons, Mondays through Thursdays, which Mark P P Page and Paul Jordan um, presented in Friday afternoon shows. In 1986, his Sunday morning shows ended. He had, and he returned to five afternoons a week. The first run of Steve Wright in the afternoon for, was from 1981 until 1993 on BBC Radio 1. The show had a cast of telephone characters created and created performed by Javin McCoy, Peter Dixon, w Richard Easter, and Pill Phil C Cornwell. While his mentor, Kelly Everett, who sadly died the year I was born, um, Wright went on to put the way to be environments like that, including stories taken from the West Weekly World News, the successfully the head single, I'll be back, released under the name Arnie and the Terminators. In later years, the style changed, from jumping more most of the characters instead of having the zoo format, which drove 
guests and comedy and sketches. Posts and producers and radio staff join in. No regular character was Mr. Angry from Pori. Smith's 1986 hit single Panic was inspired by Wright played I'm Your Man by Wham. Wow. Following the news bulletin about the Pori nuclear disaster. Wow. Johnny Marr and Marsley were listening and were distributed by the contrast and did too. Wow. The song's lyrics about the event finish. Hang the DJ and slogan appeared in the partial t shirt along with the picture of Wright. The, the DJ took it well and bought one of the t shirts. Three to one breakfast. Wright is also in, in, in his polls moved to um, uh, Bray and One Breakfast Show of 1994. He was on the Breakfast Show of 1995 years was born. Due to the difference to BBC Radio 1 management and Paul A. Red Reigns. This included the most many and more established DJs re leaving and be or being sacked around this time. Commercial Radio. Rock, Rock was picked up at a new station talk radio in 1995. Where he presented Saturday morning show. He also presented various syndicated shows on Sunday mornings on a number of other British commercial stations. BBC World Rate Service. He also joined BBC World Service in January 1999. He presented one hour programming right in the around the world. Um, okay. The show um, ran every Saturday until afternoon until the final show in October 19, 2003. Uh, this meant he was now broadcast on BBC Radio for seven days a week. Okay. Anyway, BBC Radio 2. He joined BBC Radio 2 in March 1996 when he began presenting Steve Wright's Saturday show in 1996-1999. Steve Wright's uh, Sunday Love Songs in 1994 and 6 until his death in 2024. And his afternoon show began in July 1999 until September 2022. Uh, in 2006, Wright said, was said that they earned £440,000 wow, a year at Radio 2. And in 2018 and 2019, Wright's salary was between... Two hundred sixty-five thousand pounds and four hundred sixty-nine thousand pounds. Wow, making him the BBC's highest, fifth highest uh, earning presenter. He have taken a eighty-five thousand pounds pay cut for more the year for the year uh, before. However, as a part of the effort to equalize male and female pay. Wow. Okay, Steve Ryan, the afternoon in mid nineteen ninety-nine. Following the shake-up at Radio 2, Steve Wright in the afternoon was revived. With Wright taking over the slot for Ed Stewart. John Ross and took over the Wright's Saturday morning slot. Hang on, let's see. Couldn't see a thing. Anyway, Wright presented his Radio 2 version of Steve Wright in the afternoon. A weekday afternoon, something like that. Um, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Alongside Tim Smith and Jerry Lee. Great, something like that. Who had been both occasionally appeared on Ray Leaf's presenters on the station, as well as traffic before Bobby Pryor, the number present um contributor, the old, this, the old woman that was played by jo Joyce Foss, who died in um, um November 2016. Smith and Wright um would eventually present fatals, my dad describes the as premium nuggets um. Of information of so incredible that they were really should be true, but but are wow. On July first, twenty twenty two, right now the show will be end in September. Wow, to be replaced by a new show with Scott Mills. Why we remain on Radio Two to continue hosting Sunday Love Songs, okay, along with a uh, new ser serious jogging podcast. Uh, seasonal specials and other projects. The final show was broadcast on September 30th, 2022. With Wright playing Leo Gaga by Queen as the last record. Sunday Love Songs. Sunday Love Songs with, with Wright presented solo on Sunday mornings on Radio 2 from March 21st, 1996 
until his death recently, until February 11th, 2024, something like that, the day before his death, something like that, featuring a blend of classic love songs, dedicating a lot of live romance stories. In 2013, the BBC Trust and the Standards Committee finally criticized the show The Bridge of Guidance, uh, of encouraging an audience information, something like that. After media reports revealed that the show was in fact recorded on Fridays, the last broadcast on the day before his death was recorded two days earlier, with a special Valentine's Day edition of the show. Pick up the Pops. On on August 10th, 2023, it's announced that Wright will be the new host of Pick of the Pops from October 14th, replacing Paul Jarmanke. Steve's feature show years from September 1966 to 2002. Career outside radio, something like that. He was in a BBC TV series, Steve Wright Pick up People Show, from 1994 to 1995. His next stint in radio television was the narrator and writer of Retro Pop Show, Top of the Pops 2, from 1997 to 2009. The last episode of Top of the Pops 2, he has presented with Michael Jackson's special broadcast on June 27, 2009. Unfortunately. UK chart tits. Anyway, while radio presenter at BBC what Radio 1, Ryan was involved in the, in the number of UK charts hits with members of Avenue Post, the Drive Time Radio team, including the UK Top 10 hit I'll Be Back. We featured Ryan on this one of the big Backy Bad, the Terminators, on the August 29, 1991 edition of BBC One's Top of the Pops. Steve Young and the Avenue Boys, um, Young Steve and the Avenue Boys, something like that, excuse me, on my right, RCA Records, something like that, 1982 single, um, a US single number 40, 40, something like that, I don't know. Steve Wright and the singer of Soul gives him therapy, RCA Records, 1983 single, UK single stars number 75. Steve Wright, um, the gay, uh, um, Kylie Ray or something like that. The show, story so far. MC, excuse me. MCA 1984 single, UK single stars number 61. In December 1984, something like that. Mr. Angry with Steve Wright, I'm so angry. MCA 1985 single. UK single charts number 90 in, in August 1985. Mr. Food, and that's where we come before we, we tea. Something like that. Tango record sing, single, UK single charts number 62 in that, April 1990. And finally, MD and the Terminators, I'll be back. Epic records number 1991, year, anyway. Single, UK single charts number 5. His personal life, what goes with this? Ryan was married in 1985 to Cindy Robinson, American journalist who had been met with while working in Reed. The couple have two children, Tom and Lucy, and the divorce in 1999. He had lived with, with Mary B. London close to Barrington Broadcasting House in July 2019. He told us um, the Dairy Miller he would not have the time to look for a new partner because he had worked so much on his radio programmings, he said. I'm working the afternoon show on BBC. I, I do a love song show at the weekends. And it means that I have a lot of interviews. I prep up a lot. I write a lot. So I work, I work all the time. And review the, the Rolling Stones where his favorite uh, music act. He was rumored to be allergic to feathers. Okay. And Pennsylvania. Wow. And I've spoken out on his weight issues. Wow. Felt worried. Anyway. He was appointed a member of Order of the BBC British Empire, um, MPE for short, in 2014, 2024. Um, New Year's Honors in the service of the radio. Wow. He died on, um, um, last Monday. Um, he was 69 years old. In his home in Maryville, Bowen, um, London. Okay. The London Ambulance Service reported the incident at the 10.07 that morning. 
Light was pronounced dead in the scene. Police said in the death that it was unexpected but not when treated as suspicious. His death was announced in his family by the following day. News was first broken by BBC Radio 2 by newsreader Mike Paul, who regularly read the news by Steve Wright's afternoon show. Um, truths were and led on air by film Radio 2 DJ Sherrod Cox. His colleague Tony Bradburn wrote on Twitter, now it's X, spoke like this on the BBC PM programming on BBC Radio 4. However, Sky News and, B and BBC N News 9 and Swan Friendship and with Light. BBC Radio Director Gerald Tim Davy described Wright as a truly wonderful broadcaster who has been a huge part of my so many other lives and has been over de many decades. His own professional, um, passionate, and of course, um, about the, the craft of radio and deeply in touch with his listeners. And they have four books. Steve Wright and both an amazing but true trivia for the Causer in 1995, published by Pocket Books, the Yards Boy. Anyway, keep t just keep talking. Story of the Ch Chat Show, but 1997, published by uh, Summon Stallier. Then we got Street Books, Book of Vitals, published by Hodger College, Publisher UK, 2005. And Steve Wright's Public Past Told. And, uh, again, it's published in 2007, published by, um, um, Harvard College, published in the United Kingdom. My next step topic has to do with one, two, two man. Born in, um, born in, um, Mona Sita, I can't pronounce his last name, sorry. Okay. Best known as, online as Two Mad, was a YouTuber and Twitch streamer. For Los Angeles, who would become popular in 2007, 2017, excuse me, forget it. So that is the deep growth and popularity online. Um, eventually, millions of subscribers and views on multiple accounts on YouTube, as well as other social media platforms such as Twitter, now it's X. Born December 17, 2000, in Winnipeg, Canada. Okay? He died. On, the, on February 2013, 2024, the Los Angeles Police Department was produced a welfare check on Sedek, which he had not been heard for several days. He was found responding to the of Los Angeles, California, with an arrangement that had been done. The police suspected that Sedek died from drug overdose. He was 23 years old. My last step topic has to do with Ed A. Chiba. Born that name. He was an American DJ in New York from the 70s. Considered to be the number one 12 DJ. A, real name, and where he struggles, was born um, in New York on October 18th, 1956. Okay? And um, grew up in the Douglas Projects in the Bronx, and we attended Brady's High School. Chubb is a close friend of DJ Hollywood, which I'm not a huge fan of, by the way. And then he grew up very. Uh, into each other's styles. He was quite as inspired by Def Jam Records founder, um, Roger, um, Simmons. The was of hip career, I'm not a huge fan of hip hop, sorry. Um, when Simmons heard, um, Chiba perform in Harlem in 1997, Curtis Blow, um, took a name and invented Chiba, the suggestion of Roger William Simmons, copied the power from Eddie Chiba as Blow. The force of um, Powers Chiba, the slang for um, Rajaba. He died last for, for Tuesday. He was 67 years old. Again, not a huge fan of hip hop, not a huge fan of house. That's all me. Now, we're going to do a more with Silas Pressure regards to these six step topics right now.
Thank you. Rest be the six pe uh, people that died this week. Now let's move on to the next uh, topic I need to read, and that is Moana 2. Fortunately, to say this, announcement proposed two big problems with the big Disney's live action remake strategy. Now, it turns out this, according to the news, sadly, they're going to end up leaving, um, hold on. That's not the topic I'm going to read. Um, I want to read something like one or two. Hang on. Um, loses stars. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. Okay. Okay, there we go. Found it. Okay. Okay, there we go. Found, there we go. That's the top I'm looking at. Okay, there we go. Confirm one or two losing more major star. Anyway, found it. Thank you. Anyway, Walt Disney Company, um, and here's why. Walt Disney Company, uh, just announced that Major's News that Moana 2 will be coming out in November 2024. And here's why. Moana 2016 made become a popular movie that children's parents quickly came to enjoy. Fans who fell in love with the newest Disney princess and enjoy and journey that she was born to go on. Go on. While Journey, the daughter and the village chief, Face Dangerous Self Discovery, one directed by Juan Clemens and John Musker. It's Clemens' animated film that follows the journey of the spirit Polynesian teenager. Self in the Lush and Violet Islands, the South Pacific. The movie tells the story of the princess, tells questions to preserve the part of the team fire. Now, sadly, the announcement point minor two major star will not be returned to help him create. Discussing film, tweet on X, former known as Twitter, the star of Lynn Mon Miranda. I love Sway Johnson! Okay. Will not return to help co write Moana's soundtrack. Wow. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, um, while Moana's was, direct, was not was directed by Qu Wa Wa Clemens and Wa John Mesher, Clemens will also not be working on Moana 2 due to his retirement in 2023. Yes, The new director of Moana 2 will be Dave Derrick Jr. Okay? He is known for his combination of Starboy artists as normal products like the live action Drive Lion King in 2019 and the channel in 2021. So well with Disney films. Okay? Now, as the tale of the sequel remains unknown, we know fan favorite characters such as Mario, played by Dwayne DeWalt Johnson, Moana, played by Ali Guavio, will return to a highly excited sequel. But with, um, when Mario Miranda will not be returning to Moana 2, many fans have wondered what might be next to him, as far as Disney is concerned. Wow. The poster helped tap the channel soundtrack, which quickly would make a viral hit. He has been talking about the sequel of the above 2021 Disney movie, but nothing has yet come of it as of yet. May I believe that we have not seen in the Channel 2 in 2025 or 2026 combined. But this has not it has been confirmed not yet confirmed by Disney as of yet. Disney Dying will provide new updates and be developed as, as they are releasing, but no doubt that fans are excited for the sequel to be released. And we'll be interested to see what the storyline features of it, the trailer involved later this year. Wow. I'm excited for one and two, but this is like, this is sad, you know. Anyway, my next topic has to do with Charles, King Charles III. Now, I talked about this last week and I'm going to talk about it now. This happened last week and last week it, boy, this is getting really Serious, you know. Anyway, he breaks solids after cancer diagnosis. Anyway, says this: five days after the Bowling Palace announced that Ch King Charles III has been diagnosed with cancer, the monarch released a parallel letter to put the public. Okay. Okay, I have to close this up because I want to talk about. It. Anyway, um, it's King Charles III speaking up for the first time since his. Uh, revealed this bowel cancer. Last Saturday, five days after um, Buckingham Palace announced the Parks' diagnosis, the 75-year-old released a personal letter to the public. 
I want to express my most hard, most hard world felt thanks. Many messages of support is good. Wishes, and I received in the make recent days. The King wrote, I've seen the post share on the Royal Family's Instagram page, which also be a 2023 Paul and Rock um, Greetings and Well Wishers. As well as those who have been affected by cancer will know. Um, some kind thoughts and the greatest comfort and encouragement to my dad. Mark continued, it is equally hard to hear how Sherry, my old diagnosis, had helped uh, promote public understanding and have shined um, a light on the work of all, all those organizations who support cancer patients and their families across the United Kingdom and wider planet. My wife won service inspirations for their tireless care and dedication is all greater as a result of my own personal experience. Silas Lair, King Charles R. It's my dad. This whole ch chapter was signed for, stands for Rex. The land word for King. It's my dad. His letter was printed on the letter hand read Sarahham House. The name of his Mark's country home in Marfork, England. That's what it says. That's what it written. So there you go. Anyway, the king was also um, has resided in Clarence House in London for, for years. For even um, before uh, he he said to the throne twenty two, following his mother, King Louis the second staff, um, through the serving him by helicopter with wife Queen Camilla on February sixth. To have been visited their country stay on February 4th, which is uh, again to attend the Sunday church of service. Then on February 5th, about a week after the king was released in the hospital after going to Portsmouth to treat over large prostate, Falkner Powers announced that Mark has been diagnosed in an unnamed form of cancer, which I talked about last week. Anyway, Powers told ABC News it's not the Prostate cancer at all. Okay. Uh, which I agree. But during the King's um, recent hospital, prostate, um, from being a prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Their statement said. Summary diagnosis um, test has been estimated a form of cancer. Is the majesty of today committed a um, schedule of regular treatment, during which he, time he, he has been advised by doctors to postpone public facing duties. However, both uh, hour, hours both before Charles the Comedian departed from Sandringham for the current stay, the Mark met with his son, Prince Harry, who had arrived in London from California, where he lives with his wife, Megan, Maury, and their kids, Prince um, RG4, the Princess Liberace, something like that, to, um, have a brief visit from the Duke of Sussex, Jared, back to the United States. Um, we presented an award for this 2024 NFL Harness event in Las Vegas. Okay? Meanwhile, the King's eldest son and her nyer, Prince William, recently thanked the public for their success support of the both his father and his wife, Kate. Melvin, who is recovering from anabolic surgery. I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you also for the kind um, messages of support for Catherine and my father. Well, wow. especially in the recent days, Prince Wales um, shared for uh, during the London era ambulance gallery gala there uh, on December 7th. It means a great deal to us all. A day later, Community offered an update on the King's well be during a public announcement appearance on the Cherry Concert in England. So, um, Cherry could join us, something like that. Per the Telegraph, she told an, an air ambulance worker, He's doing extremely well under the circumstances. He is very touched by all the letters and messages the public has been sending from everywhere for that is very cheery. We are for more news of all families on the world this year. But that was all to that. Anyway. Uh, 
that's just basically it from that news report. But now, for that, I'm gonna read everything. So yeah, that is it for now. So yeah. Oh, hang on, one moment. Okay, King Charles diagnosed with cancer. Um, uh, last since last week. Anyway. While Jean Charles was in the hospital when it began, Paul said Emerald's brothers, the royal family member, was diagnosed with cancer. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but that's just me, of course. Anyway. Sarah's brother is diagnosed with a second type of cancer. The Dutch of York's brother said, stated on January 11th, 21st, that Sarah was weakly diagnosed with malaria. Something like that. Anyway. Now. This is a lot to say about cancer, which I won't talk about, but unfortunately, that is a lot, you know. But, you know, that's me, of course. Anyway, moving on. My next topic has to do with Power Up Tour, and that is official. It's coming to Europe, not the United States, my, our country, nor to uh, Australia and other things. It's coming... May 17th through October, August 17th in, in, in the United Kingdom. So, from Germany, in Italy, I was right about United Kingdom all along, but they're coming in, in 2024, they're going to come, um, say May 17th, they're coming to Grasmus Rain, Germany, um, May 17th, 21st, and say Fang, 25th is Italy, Brago MS, my dad. May 29th, Sea Village, Spain, and say it was June 1st, my dad. June 5th, um, Netherlands. June 9th and 12th, Moy, Germany. June 16th and 19th, Dresden, Germany. June 21st and 26th. This is days before I turn 29. Austria, but many stuff like that. June uh, 29th is on Switzerland. The day after I turn 20, um, 20, um, 29th, I don't know, what's what happens. July 1st and 7th, London, England, and Wendy Stadium. July 13th and 17th will be Germany again. Hot this time, Hollingham and Stuttgart, my dad. Anyway. July 21st, um, so I was going that. There's a lot to deal with in these Germanys in July 27th, okay? Nuremberg and Zelbenfield. Anyway, July 31st and August 4th, Hanover, Germany. And finally, and then we're, oh no, we're gonna say finally, but yeah, but anyway. Um, August 9th, Diesel, Bar Belgium. August 13th in Paris, France. And finally, August 17th, Dublin, Ireland. There will be more coming away in the Power Up Tour, but it's an upcoming concert tour by Australian rock band ACDC, supporting their 17th studio album, Power Up, which was released on uh, November 13th, 2020. And unfortunately, Cliff Williams, a uh, bass uh, guitarist, will not be touring for us. Uh, instead, it'll be Chris Chaney, okay, and Matt Long will be the drummer from Power Up Power Trip Tour. We'll be filling in for Phil Rudd for ACDC. Anyway, my next and my last topic, I was going to do it last week, but I decided to do it this week. And it's something more difficulties. It has to do with items, and it's not very pretty, okay. Um, it's for Windows. And if you watch this remix, I'm not gonna say it, but anyway, it's finally being discontinued. I'm not gonna, it's not, um, uh, and people at uh, Windows not very happy about this, unfortunately. Mac users like me are happy, um, but it's just, I'm really happy to see iTunes again. Anyway, here's what I to use instead, okay? Unfortunately, to say this, I want to use something else like iTunes. Old school sex, anyway. Anyway, I was facing out iTunes for Windows years after the company broke down its legendary software from back into Apple mu Music, Apple Podcasts, which is okay, and Apple TV Plus. 
probably time for Windows users to have their similar experience. Whoopie doo! Anyway, if you want Windows 10, open the Apple uh, iTunes Store app. Um, if you have to download the new app, the best general experience. Oh man, the Apple Music app. Um, um, it's up to the UI loses like play loses like playback. Time for lyrics and 4K music videos. Yeez. This new variant that ensures that users get everywhere they expect, including their library and airplay. There's a new Apple TV app for Windows. Yeez. Uh, users can access the same amazing original Apple TV Plus program. Okay, that's fun. Along their library, purchase our related video content. There's also 4K playback. Description channels on Windows for the first time. Along with being able to watch MLS pre season pass. What we do, okay. And the new devices, um, 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 app uh, will also allow users to update, sync, and back up their Apple devices. And that iTunes app will continue to be a home of podcasts and audiobooks. Now, I may be a huge fan of uh, a bookstore because I haven't gone to a bookstore in years. I need to do this again, you know? Anyway, in addition, Apple is on the iCloud with Windows app. Wow, I need to do this again, but that's just me. Anyway, to provide more clarity for how it syncs with content around the devices with, and where users can assess the, on their PCs, it includes a new onboarding set of experience, displays an, an information syncing status that shows the process every upload download content for iCloud and more. iCloud may be dying, and I wish Apple would introduce the proper replacement. Now, I may be a YouTuber per se, and I may be a user, I may be a user per se, I'm a Mac user because I'm allowed this. And while Mac users have been using iTunes for years now, because I've been using it forever, but you know, I still miss how it just how how the content in one place. Now, I agree. Anyway, calling the music app is true for iTunes replacement. Disagree. Anyway, it's so also offers the iTunes store. Again? What's the difference? However, design wise, I found the app exclusive with the music experience available on the iOS devices. Mm hmm. Whatever. Anyway, some areas of the app was full of blank spaces. It's not like Apple was careful to reimagine it, something like that. So very similar to the old iTunes app. But you need to open the podcast app to find your perfect show and so on. The Apple TV app, on the other hand, was um, at least as similar to iOS and tvOS um, compiled upon, something like that. But I wish the company could discontinue the sidebar with no experience. It just feels to advantage, something like that. Stand, um... To phase out iTunes Windows, um, was definitely the right move, which is probably the right wrong move. Sorry, um, but I hope Apple rebuilds um some of those apps and experience that doesn't remind out iTunes. But there's, a, there's no longer need the reasons why them apps exist in the first place. Lastly, hope podcasts and books, which back then was called iBooks in the time, but it wasn't anymore. But um, are coming to Windows users very soon. Wow. As I, iTunes apps it lost its identity, a ball was in use for podcasts and audiobooks instead. Weird. Wow. Okay. It's what you can use instead. Wow. Still, since we're talking about iTunes for Windows, one of all for PCs offers third party iTunes offers apps. Okay. Of all using uh, Apple's own solutions, which is going to be a good idea. Might be quicker and simpler if your own products if you rip all your CDs for your p to your PCs. I mean, we'll, be, we'll keep listening to songs that way. Another app to be bring your best experience to all days to iTunes. Hooray! Me and Monkey. Good idea! If you want a full control of music library, this app would be perfect for iTunes replacement. That is a good idea. Anyway, if you can choose to report... Your phone or my media file, something like that, type something like that. You can also choose that similar music but copy between your PC or iPhone. Entire library. 
It's free to use, but there's a good license to, to use the advantage of small popular material. Touch copy, that's a good another good idea. Similar iTunes with a very good Windows look, something like that. You can virtualize your music library, transfer all your important module files, export messages, call history, backup files to a PC or Mac. This is all absolutely free to use, okay? Um but you can you, you purchase or license to enjoy its features. And finally, Waveform Music Player. Lastly, Waveform, um, it works with sound like iTunes. You can also sync music with also your iPhone. Create playlists, download music, missing album, art, um, artwork, and more. All in a simple interface. This app is also free to use. And that is my topic for today. That was the episode, um, 4 and 4 of X. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned next what's going to be the final... Evio X episode of celebrating 17 years of Evio X. Now, my excuse me, I gotta go take a dump and get prepared for this. Till next time, so Jerry's Bob, so baby, give more episodes for you guys very soon. Till then, Jim's out. See ya.